Every day, more and more people are realizing that corporate media toes the lie for the establishment. Wouldn't it be great if there were an anti-media that could challenge and counter this never-ending psyop? Oh wait, there was! You probably don't know me, but the news outlet I used to run, literally called the Anti-Media, was one of the biggest independent news organizations and one of the first casualties in the waves of censorship that have swept social media for years now. You've heard of the Twitter files, but the now never-ending euphemistic war on fake news and disinformation, which tends to mean anything that challenges their authority, started well before the censorship covered in the Twitter files. Here's a lesser known history of the establishment's modern crusade against fake news, fake news, misinformation, fake news, conspiracy theories, fake information, fake news. Fake news. In 2016, they panicked at Warhawk Hillary's loss and began a campaign to demonize non-establishment, translation questioning the narrative, media. In an early shot in this information war, the Washington Post, which has a long history of colluding with the CIA and spreading propaganda, dragged the anti-media into a hit piece by citing a group of anonymous trolls who listed the anti-media, among many others, as agents of or useful idiots for Russia. Shockingly, this was fake news. The article was widely publicized and harshly criticized, and though they later acknowledged the shoddy sourcing, it was too late. The Expert. Experts. Experts. Said it, so it was true. The corporate media kept relentlessly pushing this fake news narrative. In 2018, to save democracy, Facebook partnered with the Digital Forensics Research Lab of the Atlantic Council, one of the most establishment organizations on Earth. The Atlantic Council's board of directors is stocked with ex-intelligence, State Department, and military authorities. It's funded by the corporate oligarchy and a range of domestic and foreign government agencies. The so-called research lab later turned up in the Twitter files. The anti-media was unapologetically anti-war, and we routinely called out politicians, government, and the media for promoting the empire, so... <laughs> I'm in danger! Within five months of the Atlantic Council joining forces with Facebook, hundreds of outlets and pages, many of them political and with views ranging across the spectrum, were removed from the platform in a single day ahead of the 2018 midterms. Facebook deemed the purge a crackdown on inauthentic activity and spam. Most of the media faithfully reported that they were fighting fake news and fraud. They got the anti-media in this purge, and only hours later on the same day, Twitter removed us too, and even went after my personal account. Was the research lab behind our ban? It's as good a guess as any, but if they were, they're probably never going to admit it. And to my knowledge, the Twitter files didn't cover Twitter purges in 2018. What I do know is that we lost our jobs and millions of followers who wanted information outside the mainstream that didn't pander to partisans or prop up politicians and government as false saviors. Unsurprisingly, politicians and the mainstream media are free to spread mis- and disinformation, as they've done for generations. They're free to repeatedly call for violence, clear violations of platform rules. Meanwhile, people who call this out have been demonized and silenced and those in power still want more control. All these years, I felt personally gaslit by the establishment, which I used to trust wholeheartedly before I started questioning official narratives. But I've had a lot of time to contemplate my censorship punishment, and I decided a long time ago I still will not be complying with their twisted, manipulated version of reality. So I'm back with a new writing project to carry the torch. And to celebrate it, I'm gonna burn that disgraceful Washington Post article, but not as a rejection of the spirit of journalism or its importance, even if I think many of the people who work for corporate media are misguided, deceitful, imperial collaborators. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen, I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. I'm torching it because it's a pleasure to burn this symbol of the rotting, illegitimate system that masquerades as a shepherd of the people it rules over. It's a pleasure to burn all the lies, manipulation, and propaganda this article represents. Check out my new Substack, Pleasure to Burn, at pleasuretoburn.substack.com.